One of my favorite things that I like to do at the end of the year is look back at the year I just had and do some reflections. I do this personally and I do it in my business. And although this is only my second year in business, a lot has happened. So in today's video, I'm going to take you behind the scenes of my business. I'm going to share the reflections that I use to determine how things went this year and also how I'm going to use those reflections to determine what I'm doing this year. And in sharing this, I hope I inspire a framework that you can use for yourself in your own life. So I'm going to talk about business this week, what worked, what didn't, what I'm going to do differently, and what really helped me as a neurodivergent entrepreneur. And then next week, I'll do the same thing with my life situation, because I don't know if you can tell, but things are getting a little sparse around here because there's a lot of changes going on for this girl in 2024, and it's not just in business. But let's start there with the reflections of 2023, how it went for me, and how I'm going to use what I learned about that to influence what I'm doing this year. Let's start off with some wins because that is the one thing that we have a tendency, present company included, to completely overlook. So when we don't look at progress, all we're looking at are the bad things because the bad things are the things that scream the loudest. They're the things that our nervous system picks up, it's what gets lodged into our memory, and it starts to build an identity about who we are and what we're capable of. So I'm gonna give myself a little pat on the back here because in 2023, I met and exceeded my overall revenue goal. I took you guys on the journey of trying to build up one of my revenue streams and I didn't quite get there, but I'm really proud of the results that I got in terms of that revenue. However, overall in my business, I did really well from a revenue standpoint. Now there's more to that because it's not just about the money. So stay tuned because I'm gonna break down why I'm not going to repeat the same things in 2024. A few other things I'm really proud of is that I doubled my email list. If you're an entrepreneur, especially in the online space, having an email list is really important and being consistent with that is also very important. I'll talk a little bit more about consistency as we go on because I know that's a pain point for all of us myself included. A few other wins, I'm almost at 300,000 downloads on my podcast. It's the ADHD Friendly Show. If you're not listening to it, what are you doing with your life? If you're on YouTube, I grew exponentially. Not only did I double my subscribers, but my view count was like 15X. That's a beautiful thing about doing things on YouTube. All of your videos become little assets for you that people continue to watch over time. So unlike Instagram or LinkedIn, where you post something and then it's gone the next week, all of my content is continuously serving my audience, even stuff from two years ago. So I love YouTube and I would say that is probably one of the secrets of my success this year and last year. So in addition to all of that, I also was a guest speaker on two online summits. I coached over 30 new ADHD adult clients and I launched two new programs. The Organized Business, I launched in the spring, which is a Notion template for anyone who has a business currently or is in the process of building it up and just needs structure and organization. And the other thing that I launched in December was Align to Start. It's an ADHD entrepreneur roadmap that takes you through idea and conception all the way through to launching so that you can follow through, be very clear on the direction you're going in and move forward in confidence. So that was a successful launch with my first cohort and I will be launching it again in the spring. If you are interested in getting into entrepreneurship and you wanna work with somebody who understands the challenges of your brain, whether it's overwhelm, imposter syndrome, or just getting yourself to do things, then sign up for that list below. I will contact you when it opens up again in the spring. So those are my successes in 2023. And I got to say, it was a great year. As I've mentioned before, I've had many businesses before this one, but for the first time, I have understood what it takes to be consistent in a way that works for me. And I've created a workflow or let's call it a rhythm maybe that helps me stay consistent. And the secret to being consistent in my view is to find a process or a workflow that works for you and then just doing it over and over again consciously until it becomes unconscious. Now the downside of this, which I've also learned, is that whenever you take a little bit of time off from that rhythm, 
it's like starting all over again. So I took some time off over the holidays and I am finding it so hard to get back into that rhythm. It's like running through hummus, man, but I'm getting there. I know the steps I have to take and I just keep taking small actions and it gets done. So on that note, I also wanna share some of the struggles that I had this year because they were plenty. The first thing I gotta say is that entrepreneurship is lonely and I've spent a lot of time in this office right here, either coaching clients or making content or creating products. And although I love doing all of those things, I gotta get out more. So a lot of things are changing in my personal life next year, which I will share in my next video. And I hope that will somehow mitigate this really deeply entrenched habit I've gotten of just waking up, working out, coming into my office, working all day, making dinner, sitting on the couch, going to bed. Like, I mean. I actually do love that routine, but I love it a little bit too much. I got to get out and see people face to face. Like vitamin C, i.e. vitamin connection for an adhd -er, is so important. So this year, I'm really taking my work out of this office, literally and figuratively, and moving it into new places where I can be around like-minded people. Another thing that I learned about myself this year, and I've shared this with you, it's not going to be new. <laughs> Appointments gives me anxiety. Being on Zoom for hours on end every day drains my energy. And it's also partly because when you're coaching, you have got to pay such close attention to the things that your client's saying, the things they're not saying, their body language, the tone of voice. So it requires intense listening. And for an adhd -er whose brain is often going like this, it's really hard for me to get that level of focus. So that has been a huge struggle for me this year to the point where I've started not looking forward to my coaching days. I love my clients and my clients give me so much energy and I adore working with them. But because it requires so much mental energy from me and also these appointments, which usually start around noon, so I have the morning to take care of myself, all I can think about are my appointments and not being late for my appointments. And is the Wi-Fi gonna be working for my appointment? And is the dog gonna need to be taken out before my appointment? And my brain just can't get off of the appointment. So this has become hugely taxing for me. I don't know if I'm alone with that. <laughs> Maybe that's just like my weird little quirk that it's to the point where something has to change. So on that note, I'm gonna get into the questions I'm asking myself about how I wanna change my business in 2024. I will list the questions in the blog post that's linked below as well. So if you wanna use these on yourself, feel free to do so. Let's get started with number one. And the first question I'm asking myself is, if I were my own business coach or life coach, knowing what I know about the reflections I just made, what would I advise myself to do with my business in 2024? And the answer to that is clearly that I need to step away from one-on-one -on -one coaching. Now, I have a wait list of folks that are interested in working with me and I've already reached out to them to tell them that for Q1, at least, I will not be taking on any new clients. That'll give me more time, honestly, to focus on group coaching, which is not only more effective for participants, but are a lot more fun and a lot more streamlined. So it's going to help me do more in less time. And I also want to broaden the tools I have, like lower cost things that can help somebody who's just newly diagnosed, but doesn't necessarily have the funds to jump into a coaching program. So I'm really gonna take this time to take a step back in my business, think about what my audience really needs and how I can serve them in ways that scales my energy, my time, and is more cost-effective and fun for you guys. So the next question, which I love, is if my business was simpler this year, what would it look like? And we've already talked about eliminating one-on-one -on -one coaching. I would probably do one live cohort per quarter, and I would also streamline my messaging, my product offering, and the channels I'm using to further hone in on the person that I'm trying to serve, which is a late diagnosed adhd -er, probably somebody over the age of 35 and is looking to improve their productivity at work or in their business and also looking to improve their well-being, which looks like less overwhelm, less confusion, less clutter, less stress and anxiety, because all of those things make your ADHD symptoms a lot worse. So the more that we can improve our well-being, the more that we can just improve the quality of our life and be happier people, which we all want. So that is how I would simplify my business. And a big piece of that is going to be stepping away from short form content. 
So less effort on Instagram, probably no effort on TikTok. I'm just not interested in the platform. And it appears that you guys aren't either. So I'm going to double down on YouTube and my blog and my newsletter because those are the areas where I can go deeper and teach things that are really going to matter to both of us. The next question is what area of my business did I really enjoy working in and what area did I not enjoy working in? And again, this goes the same for life because if you're not really paying attention to what you enjoy doing, then you're not intentionally building either a business or life that truly aligns with who you are and what you're interested in doing. And when we don't do things that we're interested in, we poop out. So for me this year, as much as I enjoyed the interaction and connection of coaching, I didn't enjoy the length of my coaching calls, the amount of coaching calls that I did, and the amount of appointments I had on my schedule. What I really did enjoy was creating content when I was in the zone of creation. What do I mean by that? I don't know about you, but my energy goes like this on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. I can have a few days where I'm very low energy and that can look like just feeling tired, scattered, my ADHD symptoms are worse, I might be feeling a little bit down or anxious. It's really hard to be creative in those moments. But on days where I have a great night's sleep, I had a great meal the night before, I'm fully hydrated and feeling good and I've worked out, I can go gangbusters and punch out a lot of content and be very prolific. So I really enjoyed creating content that aligned with my rhythm and flow. The next question is, what can I cut out of the things that I didn't enjoy doing this year? And I've already covered that, so I won't get into it any further, but I wanted to share it because obviously there's things in our lives that we have to do that we don't enjoy that we can't cut out. But a lot of the things that we're doing that we don't enjoy, we can. So ask yourself, what can you cut out in this coming year in your business or life to really just improve the overall quality and reduce the anxiety that you feel about doing them. The next question is, how can I add more fun and enjoyment in 2024 in my business and in my life? As I already mentioned, one of the things that was a struggle for me this year was that I just didn't have enough face-to-face -face time with people. So next year, I'm gonna make sure to do more co-working dates with friends and using body doubling more. The next question is, which activity brought me the most peace this year? And that is definitely the rhythm I created around this content workflow that I've talked about. I will link to the video up here where I walk through every piece of it, but having that rhythm and flow has taken away the guesswork and stress out of creating content and being uh, consistent and thoughtful about how I'm doing it. And the way I repurpose things makes it so easy. So I highly recommend checking that video out. It's brought me so much peace this year and I'm so grateful for it. So on that note, the next question is how can I bring more peace into 2024? I think for next year, using that same idea of content creation is to be more intentional with the topics I'm picking so that they align with the services in my business and the customer I want to serve and the pain points that I get from that customer. So just being more intentional overall, I think is gonna bring me more peace because what I'll be building will feel like it matters. Because the one thing I don't wanna give you is fluff. I know your time is precious, my time is precious, God knows our uh, attention is very precious. So I wanna make sure everything that I'm delivering has intention. And the next question is purely marketing related and it is, if you could only market your business on one channel in the next six months, what would it be? For me, hands down YouTube. YouTube and my newsletter, and I, I know that's two, so I'm cheating, but YouTube has been like the game changer for my business. I love this audience. I love sharing content on this platform. I can go deeper, make more meaningful content, and we hang out together. So definitely YouTube and my newsletter. If you have a business and you don't have a newsletter, then you are missing out on a deeper connection with your audience. And also I recognize that being on YouTube is rented land. YouTube could pull my channel tomorrow and my business would be dead if I didn't have an email list. So that is hugely important. Don't sleep on an email list. The next question is what can I delegate, automate or simplify or just get rid of in terms of tasks? to free up more time and space for myself next year. I feel like I did a lot of that last year and I mention it in my workflow video. I use an AI software to cut my long form content into shorter reels. And then I schedule those reels using Metrocool. Those are two pieces of software that have saved me so much time. I also find Notion AI to be super helpful in terms of helping me polish my content or repurpose it for different structures. It's all my words, it's all my ideas, but I'm not the best speller, I am not the best at grammar, 
but Notion AI takes care of all of that for me. And the last question is, who is the ideal client that I felt most drawn to this year? And if you're doing this in your own business, it can be a specific person or just a characteristic. From a characteristic profile, I would say somebody who's late diagnosed, probably over 35, predominantly women, although I've really enjoyed working with men this year as well. And they're also just very curious and coachable. They're interested in things like Notion and productivity and understanding their ADHD and working with their brain. So they've gone through the process of being diagnosed. They have that initial sense of relief that now at least they know what it is. And then they go into this phase of feeling perhaps angry or sad and grieving what could have been and how they missed out on so much or how they weren't supported the way that they felt they should have been. And trust me, I went through all of these. The problem with that phase is if you don't move out of it, you start to become a victim of it, right? Like you stay in this mode of, I have ADHD, which means I can't do anything. I can't follow through on anything. I can't create routines. I can't hold down a job. And the whole narrative in your mind becomes, I can't. And that can be a very dangerous place to be. And I can actually tell in a minute if somebody's in that zone. I can see it in the comments when there's catastrophizing about life and that nothing seems to work for them. So, you know, their life is over. That's a really hard place to be and my heart goes out to those folks, but there is a next phase if you're willing to move into it. And that is the phase of acceptance of, okay, this is what I'm dealing with. This is where I'm at. How can I learn to work with my brain as opposed to against it? And what tools and processes can I bring into my life and into my world to take the load off of my already very busy brain? And once you get to that phase, when you're leading with curiosity and acceptance rather than feeling like a victim, then there's so much more that you can do. And that's when you can truly embrace who you are as an individual and be happy with who you are and content with all of your flaws and your strengths. So I hope that all of you can move into that phase this year if you're not already there. I hope the questions I shared today can help you get into that mindset of curiosity and acceptance. And I hope that all of us have an amazing year to come. So stay tuned for my next video where I'll be breaking down how I'm doing things differently in my personal life. And I'm gonna be taking you along with me and we're all going to learn a ton. Until then, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.